Hello there everyone, welcome back to TNO The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Tam Mokalobo. And right now, if you'd like to read about sailing through stormy nights, please go right ahead. In which, I know at the end of the last episode, I showed you this focus that we're going to do, Fleet of Hegemony. If you'd like to read that again, please go right ahead. In which, the microphones, they are what they are. Um, additionally, uh, well, maybe I didn't read that, go right ahead. But uh, we'll do The Ocean for the Wolves. U-boats, or submarine as inferior nations call them, were key actors in a victory over the British. Constant raids along Atlantic convoy routes were a slow but steady drain on the economies or the enemy's flow of supplies. Both military and civilian. Had sea line never gone ahead, the British would have starved in short order and surrendered regardless. With a surface fleet occupied in our European waters, the responsibility of patrolling the ocean trade routes and projecting power around the globe falls to the U-boat fleet. Recent advances and technology have allowed experimental U-boats to reach depths never thought possible and range as, as far afield as the Caribbean Sea. The only business our Navy will ever have so far from the Reich is to do the unthinkable and engage in nuclear retaliation. For this, the U-boats will have all they need. We get a 80% research bonus for submarine models, and we do have some comments to go through as well once we get Fleet of Hegemony done. Treason or Pragmatism? No less glorious. See the world. Dock your up and up at an Unser Meer. That's our sea, right? I think that's Meer? 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 I think? I don't know. It's been a while since I've done German. Replace ineffective reform outlook with derailed reform outlook. Oh boy! Oh, what do we have here? So, oh. Hmm. Did I not... Ooh, did I get everyone with us? I gotta double check. We have the INX back here. Oh, England doing the OFN. That's interesting. Um, we're looking pretty good. Honestly, we're looking pretty good. Right now, we're leaning a little too conservative for us right now. But really, it's, it's really not that bad. It's not that bad. Relatively stable. Um, regime stability is 100% though, as well as right here, employ and deck of satellites, but right now we'll go do Unternehmen Schlangenfresser. Cool, if you like to about that, please go ahead, bing, bong, boom, nice. We can do this all anyways, because we can, because we want to, and of course we're done with research, I believe, as well. So good, so, so good. Uh, choosing a pragmatism. Admiral Carl Dönitz, the man our late Big Daddy always felt he could rely on since taking power, he and, and Big Daddy Speer have never quite seen eye to eye. Partially, this is because Dönitz is known as a known Bormanite, who would sooner go down with a ship than see German become something he hates. More importantly, Dönitz sees Crimea without permission during the Beggar Krieg, grounds for a charge of treason if the Führer so desired it. However, Dönitz might have some misgivings about the Führer's regime, in which he is almost unbelievably loyal to the Reich. He returned to the fold without argument and never spoken publicly against the Big Daddy. Considering both these factors and his popularity with conservatives, we are more inclined to believe his claim that the usurpation of civilian authority in Crimea was pure pragmatism and the, mor and the morally, if not legally correct, thing to do at the time. Cool. Hopefully he speaks truth, but you never know. See the world. The Kriegsmann was always the disfavored branch of the Wehrmacht in public eyes. Hitler made many admirable attempts to change this, but the unfortunate fate of the Bismarck put a serious dent in its reputation. Despite the enormous contribution of U-boats to our victory, it is difficult to glorify ships that refuse open combat and mostly target unarmed merchant ships. Regardless, the Führer has declared his intent to fulfill Hitler's dream of making the Navy glorious again. With the modernization of the Kriegsmarine, there will be a great need for more manpower. A full-on recruitment campaign targeting young men, who not yet committed to another branch of the military, will begin immediately. Redirecting some conscripts to the Kriegsmarine will also help, sh uh, sh also help should volunteers prove insufficient. Hitler will have his grand armada one way or another. A grace from above. Karl Donuts felt a bit of deja vu as he entered the Führer's personal office. He'd been there many times, but this time, the man seated behind the desk was different. Albert Speer looking at him sternly, Henning von Trusko standing at his side, his back rigid, and a slightly offended expression on his face. The Admiral advanced to the desk and stopped, saluting the Führer as protocol demanded, even though his, the, his demeanor made it clear he would wanted someone else on that chair. Admiral Donuts Speer began, his voice severe, I have called you here for an important matter regarding your conduct during the Civil War. The old Admiral knew it was coming, so he steeled himself for what was to come. I'm ready to take my punishment if it is needed, he answered with a calm, resigned voice. During the Civil War, or the Burger Krieg, it has been proved beyond doubt that you took Bormann's side, not only that, but you also fled the country during the chaos, taking the majority of the Kriegsmarine with you, disobeying all orders to fight and find refuge in Crimea. I did that to say the Kriegsmarine, was the immediate answer, but what came next surprised him. I know that, Admiral, and through your action. You saved many ships, which would have been lost, or even worse, used against us. For this reasoning, Von Tresco and I came to an agreed and fitting solution. A barely audible snort told the Admiral that the agreement was mostly on one side, but he focused attention back on Speer. 
For betraying the Reich and fleeing, you will be stripped of your rank as Admiral and formally excused of treason and dereliction of duty for saving the majority of Kriegsmarine from certain destruction or capture. You shall be graced, for your decorations will not be revoked. The now former Admiral felt a pang in his heart knowing that his service was over in such a way, but he knew it could have been much worse. He took off his hat and dis deposited it on his desk, and then saluted and left the room without a word. Is life is a life in defeat even worth living? No, that's glorious, though. Germany has always aspired to possess a great navy. It was alright as a global power, and we achieved it with the foundation of the Hoxie Flota in the late 19th century. However, that glory ended at the Jutland. Under Hitler, a new vision emerged for the German navy, one that would carry the majesty of national socialism to the seas and break the British hegemony forever. We accomplished our task, but, sounded, but sound rulership must always follow conquest. There is still glory to be had in the maintenance of an empire, even if a sailor serves for a decade and never hears a shot fired in anger. He will still have contributed to the continued safety and splendor of the Reich. Spreading the mes message throughout the Reich is the responsible thing to do. Von Chusko's idea of a Kriegsmarine that contributes to furthering globalism is pure folly. Get a bonus for battleships? Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. Why not? Improve battleship hall. We like the big ships. I like big ships and I cannot lie, man. Oh, baby boy. The bigger the better. Mmm, those big bull guns. 99% regime stability? We're gonna fall apart here now, are we? See the world, see the world, see the waves, my friends. Unse Mer, the North Sea, the Baltic, the English Channel, the Bay of Biscay, the Black Sea, these are our waters, and ours alone. Just as Hitler raised the flag of National Socialism over half of Europe, the Kriegsmarine raised it over the gleaming blue. Every wave that crashes upon the shores of rain-lashed England is a reminder that our naval might reign supreme. It is the mighty guns of the Kriegsmarine that keep our allies and subjects alike safe from Bolshevik plutocratic predations. The Reich rules Europe seas, and it is here to stay. Absolutely, 100%. And I completely forgot about this stuff. As, as you can see, like, Dalma Benz is almost gone. So, thank you. Thank you. Keep doing that. Um, yeah, all we have left then is IG Fabin, which shouldn't be too bad. But some of these areas are not quite good. That doesn't do very much. 5 million is an extreme amount to some million. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll do the 2 million one because we can. Because we have a lot, quite a bit of PP, but we need to get a lot more command power. So, oh boy. But I hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm doing okay myself. Not great, but not bad. Okay. But it's a pretty good day, actually. And we can play as Papa Speer. Or at least Germany. Or just playing games. But if you like to read about Germanic rules of the ways, please go right ahead. Because I've done that before. I've, I've read this one before. So if you like to read it, please go right ahead. Ah, oh, Germania. Yes. What's better than a Germania? Germania 2 or 5. Or Welthauptstadt Germania. Hmm. Germania is so great. We should make another one. All right. Up next. Um, probably Behold the Legions. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Just... Getting back to square one, the new division limit will be 100. The general staff recommends to prepare for the eventual limitation of the Wehrmacht to 50 full divisions. Um, we can do that one too. That's probably really good to do. Um, but we'll do this one first. Why not? Behold the legions. I've already cut us down to 10, 10, uh, 50 divisions. Each. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So really not that bad. Oh, we can't do it yet? Uh, that's weird. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Mm, let's do that one first. Hey, 19 million slaves. That's not bad. That's really not bad at all. But the Great Tax Reduction, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. Harold, Harold Wilson, re-elected Prime Minister. I've seen you play as Harold Wilson someday, but we'll see what happens. And there go the English and the Scottish. Always killing each other because they love each other with big love. Uh, actually, are we trading for stuff we don't need? Yeah, we are. That is weird. Okay. Uh, we could use tungsten, but whatever. I'm actually converting military factories to civilians so we can make even more money. So, we'll see what happens. Overall, looking not too bad. Pretty good. Hamburg is looking pretty good. Oh. Ah, I forgot Vienna. Oh, my goodness. What's wrong with me? And I'm also building a lot in, the, uh, in our allies' territory, too, because... Why not? You know, why not? Mm, anything else? Oh, did I forget this one? I did forget this one, too. I'm glad I remembered it, too. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Do we get the islands down here, too? No. Maratinius or something like that? and Something like that? I don't know. Yeah, we're building a lot. We're building a whole lot, as you can see. All right. Uh, let's go back over here. You guys, back to square one. The battle for Germany's not yet over yet. If you like it about that, please go ahead. The hair is the last group that we gotta figure out how we're gonna work with. Do that. I'll do it if they have less than a million slaves. I would there you go. Perfect. Nice. But if they have more than a million, I don't want to do the other stuff, so. Alright, it's time to get a tax hit. Oh, oh man, that hurts. Oh, why do you have to hurt me so badly? Oh, we've only 14% GDP growth. Oh, oh the deficit's are so bad. Oh god. But for the worker, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. Because we can improve our industrial expertise, which is nice. It's not super important. But I'd still rather have than not have it, right? And a new Deutschland. There you go. A new Germany, yes. So with this episode, um, I'm probably going to go ahead and... Uh, want, if we get to it, I will make sure we use 
focus or you know Khan's commands to get through all the focuses just to see what they're like because I haven't I haven't done a lot a lot of these focuses especially regarding Italy Japan so I, I really want to see what can happen so um I might get Netsram maybe <sighs> we'll see we'll see I'm not really sure I might just do it anyways but we'll see what if it's... hey look now we're, now we're in the middle that's good that's actually really nice with doing this stuff we almost get four political power every single day so it's actually really worth doing all right so after that uh, precious glory Ignore the hair. I don't want to lose PP. If you want to read about uh, Precious Glory, please go ahead. It's very nice. I love the Division organization. It's very bueno. Now, let's come back over here. Cut, cut, cut. For the love of God, cut it. Less than a million? Good. Military austerity. I mean, really, we don't need to spend any more. Okay, so... 52 billion. 69 billion with a B. Jesus Christ. And there goes the propaganda campaign. Um... There we go. It's not doing very much, but we'll do it anyways. Why not? Cool. Close that out. Uh, let's we'll see where we're at. We're neutral. We're really neutral. I don't want it to get any better. What if I did this one? We'll go conservative. Um, before I do that, a truly national army would be really good to do. Ineffective reform outlook. Oh, God. That's so bad. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll definitely do which one? We'll definitely do Spells OKW. OK derailed the conservative side will get more benefits um we'll have some stuff here for reforms i think as well just for eco economic stuff i think mm, just do this one anyways it's fine it's fine whatever precious glory yeah i might just avoid this stuff for now i mean i'll do it later but still all right the, the right kind of politics yes oh there goes scotland Oh, I can read this one. The pure issue of politicization is that it corrupts a soldier's pure, honest duty. That being to fight for this nation, family, and home. Nazism went further than most ideologies, however. It normalized brutality, turned patriotism to blind obedience, and caused righteous anger to degenerate into ideological hatred. This is actively harmful to the well-being of soldiers, especially once they return to civilian life and find a world completely alien to them. Some level of politicization is inevitable, but it shouldn't be like this. When he is enlisted, a man's political thought should be at best how to serve his country. Bringing ideology into the mix causes him to filter everything through the lens of what he is most politically acceptable, rather than what he should do. The education of soldiers should be turned into a more normal traditional direction. We must ensure that they are, no, they are, they are loyal to the nation, not to a party's ideology. Supposedly. Hmm. A Baganian lullaby. The Black State continues to elude us. Oh. Okay, so yeah. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. I think I read this one last time, so... Yeah. We're talking about the knowledge of these global plans will come in handy, surely. Yeah. Cool. Hey, that's really good to know. Please keep counting, 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 cut, 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 cut. That's looking a lot better. We got a lot of PP. I love it. Um, so if you want to read about this one, a mor moral, fell uh, jadame. We remove, kill them all with military policing. But sometimes, what if we just want to kill them all? What if it feels good? <laughs> no comment. So now we're going quite conservative. That's going down, home sweet home. Uh, if you want to buy that, please go ahead. And use Danzig, modern spelling, not Gdansk. Gdansk is an old, decrepit, ancient version of Danzig. And we speak correct German here. Um, we sent to the entry of Far East, West Siberia. These are all the same. If you want to read that, please go ahead. Who's actually here? So we have the WRF, probably the Yeltsin, uh, Republic, and Far Eastern Soviet. I want to harm the Western Russian state first. Very good. Maybe you want to read about Salute the Man or the Nation? Please go ahead. There you go. And because this is coming down nicely enough, I'm going to... Uh, we can do that and get rid of it immediately, though. Oh, uh, We'll get this one done eventually. So, I'm thinking... Let's start with this one. There you go. Start really cutting down these groups. Even though we should maybe probably start doing... Uh, yeah, start doing this one, too. Poland. Actual Poland. Um, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. Heil whom? Do we Heil Speer? Or Heil Germania? Well, uh, if you want to read about No More Party Guys first, please go ahead. We get more organization. We lose some, quite a bit of daily political power, too. But, you know, whatever. Uh, but, because we're, we're not going to go with the Reich's OKW, we're going to go with Speer's OKW. We're going to Heil Speer. Hey, look at that war sport now. Not bad. 85% is not too shabby. Ah, uh, sure. Why not? Russia needs to burn. God, I wish we could just 
smash Russia, but we'll see what happens. Actually, do we need... We're still, like... Oh. Reichsland. Poland. Barowowski. Uh, yeah, I saw these guys, we saw these guys yesterday. Um, anything else here unique, different? No. Oh, Heinz Müller. You're looking a little different there. A clean Wehrmacht. There you go. If you want your butt up, please go ahead. Get more war support. Very nice. So we got all this stuff down up here. Ah, battleships. Yes. <gasps> Nuclear reactor battleships. Second inauguration of Big Daddy Bennett. Oh, boy. I still need to play as him. I might actually play as him sometime relatively soon after this uh, campaign. We'll see. I waited to do this campaign to see if Toolbox Theory would come out, but it never did. At least at the time recording, so. Let me forge the hair. Oh, we're going to hurt a pee, pee Oh, that's so painful. Don't you hate when you, your pee-pee hurts? Hmm. Hmm. No comment. No comment. I say a whole lot of weird things here on the channel. At this point, because I'm a little worried about what could happen, we're just going to start cutting this down a little bit at a time. It's not going to be very effective, I know. But, hey, that's bad. Ah, we got, it's got 1%. That's actually not too bad. There you go. That's what we've been waiting for. All right. Vulnerable. Dalma Benz is vulnerable. Oh, wait. Are they not done yet? Am I missing something here? Um, I'm not seeing it. Mm, close out of it, maybe? Oh, maybe we have to do something here in the focus tree first? Or let's check out this thing first, maybe? Um... Ah, buyout, yes. Well, if you wonder about that, please go ahead. That would be good to get done. I, I forgot about this one. Huh. Repatriation efforts will be enhanced, which would be good. So, must be vulnerable for us to take this action, and then we can do that then. Good. Good, 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 good. In the meantime, keep cutting these guys down. They don't deserve life. Uh, we are 30 as well. I'm going to do this one first. They need to get hit really hard here. Nice. That's going very well, actually. Please dismantle, please dismantle, please dismantle. All right, so after that... Oh, member overview. Oh, it's Zolverine. That's kind of a mess. Uh, let's go to that. Uh, let's go to this first. So after that one, if you'd like to read about War Has Changed, I'm um, sure, why not? If you like about War Has Changed, please go ahead. It's a seven-day focus, which is really nice, actually. Quite, quite nice. And also, uh, oh, Guns into Plowshares. There you go. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Uh, like one of the comments from yesterday, yesterday, actually quite a few comments from yesterday, and from my Discord server, I hope you like the thumbnail. I'm really pushing <laughs> what I can put on for thumbnails. So, I hope you like the little swastika. I think it was really fitting. It's really hard to find images, good images of, like, Nazis and stuff. All right, there you go. She got the report. A success in the snow. Great. It's hard to find good pictures of handsome Nazis. Or just good pictures of them. So you can actually put them as thumbnails. So. Hopefully Mama Susan doesn't hit me. But if she does, please pray for the channel. <laughs> oh, Susan. I hope she never discovers who I am. Anyways, uh, wool has changed. And then uh, more practical options. Yes, please. Dismantled. Good. How oh, well do we do? Oh, it's nice. That's good, good, good. I'll oh, cut him down. Weissrutenin. Dalma Benz dismantled. If you want to buy that, please go ahead. Ah. I don't think I'll ever be able to afford a Dalma Benz. Then again, I need a job first. And this YouTube does not pay that well. Like, I'm, I apologize for all the ads. Like, I really do. But, like... I don't make that much money from it. I still make less than minimum wage. But anyways, it's a choice and focus. What are we going to focus on here, my friends? If you like to read about the descriptions on screen, or the, the event, oh, event here, or description, whatever we call it, please go right ahead. Ah, oh, Maria Schenk, Graf von Stauffenberg, huh? I think I went artillery last time or something. Bring forth the panzers. I mean, I just, I just support better. Let's do support equipment. Why not? Or support technology. Anything there? Anything there? Not yet. Not yet. You know it's almost time. Keep cutting them down. Nice. Make sure each area generally gets at least one of those. This one won't need it, but that's okay. And then a regular infantry. Oh, minimum wage. So, as was recommended to me by, like, you guys and on the Discord server, basically what I'm trying to do is being, tr trying to reform the economy while be kind of conservative with, with mostly everything else. But so the new officer is very nice. And going about minimum wage, please go ahead. Eha hasn't been wrong yet. We cannot risk angering the corporations. It's weird that we're pushing for minimum wage, but whatever. Hmm. Before we do that, we do lose max factories in a safe. Uh, well, 
<laughs> or 14 out of 10 of there, which is so weird to see. I think we pretty much hit everything else here. Um, yeah. He hasn't been wrong yet. Erhard is a man with an economic plan. Hopefully he doesn't lead us down any dangerous paths. Uh, minimum wage? Of course, a few doesn't heed corporate parasites. Despite his bluster, I just can't risk his policy. Soldiers, not machines. Minimum wage? If, if he'd only listen. Nice. Slash, slash, baby boy. Or baby girl, whoever you are. Nice. They're influential still, but not for long. Albert Speer has a way to deal with them. Anything else? No? Oh, yes. Do it because we can, because we love it. Soldiers, not machines. A true national army. So, Wehrmacht reform will be look ineffective. Huh. That's not good. Hey, get more organization, loosen political power, get more attack, defense. Lot oh, wait, take a lot more supply consumption. Wow. But recovery rate goes slightly better. Training time goes way up. Dis we become a disarmed nation, too. Which, I don't understand. Like, yeah, we're trying to professionalize. I mean, I guess it saves money, too, but... Just because you're on disarmed or even volunteer doesn't mean you're not professional. Like, if anything, having a volunteer only sounds more professional than disarmed. But maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just... that. Maybe it's just the name. Maybe it's just the name of it. I don't know. It just seems very weird. Oh, you're a volunteer army? You're not professional. I don't know about that, man. But who am I? I'm just a guy on the internet who makes sometimes bad political takes, right? It's only 75 billion in deficit. Just just blame it on the kids, you know, blame it on your kids, they'll pay it off. Bread and circuses. Touch in the interbranch cooperation, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. Ah, more air superiority. Better or less enemy air supports, amphibious invasion speed, more champ bombardment, very nice. And now, because the campaign ended, and we're going to go a little bit more conservative, or we're going to go and actually do this one, we're going to go the opposite direction, I'll go reformist. Because that was not looking too bad. So we'll see what happens, but I will read about Spiel's OKW. Von Trusco and his clique are becoming entirely too brazen in their efforts to assert their independence. Military men are not to be trusted. Even if they embrace national socialism, all but the most die-hard true believers will choose loyalty to their men over their fear. Hitler understood this, hence his constant scrutiny of the Wehrmacht, what they call interference. The fear understands to be more common sense. OKW must be brought in line. The reins upon their neck tightened. They must serve the Big Daddy and the National Socialism, as the entirety of the Vogue does. That this talk of independent command is tantamount to treason and will cease immediately. If on just and Spider will not serve loyally, then there are others who will. That's a lot of pee, -pee. That's a great deal of pee, pee I need to do more military gun stuff. Um, actually, what is that for right now? Verfaschwunde. Verfaschwunde. Von Trusco's hair. Not bad. I mean, I hate that supply consumption, but it's not bad. Okay, so we remove that. We get... that. That's like nothing to us. All right, whatever. So we have authoritarian Democrat. Under Helmut Schmidt, we have fascist Speer. And we have national socialist Oberlander. Come on, poverty. Get better. Get better. All right, let's come back up here. And who are we going to cut down? You guys. Um, There's a lot of slaves still here. Poland has 5 million. Poland, you're next. Jesus Christ. Hey, 17 million slaves. We're, we're working hard. Wait. Uh, we're, uh, we're over the limit? I don't think so. They say you have 51. 1, 2, 3, 4, t 5. 5 times 10. I mean, I could be wrong here. I'm, you know, I never, I almost got a D in calculus in high school, but 5 times 10 is usually 50, right? Am I wrong about that? Like, I'm not good at math, but, all right, bye-bye, Marines. <laughs> I don't, okay, then. Despair. Oh, yeah, reactionaries go bye-bye. That's fine. We get more PP. That's fine with us. Uh, Spaz OKW. Making the big man big power. So this is... Oh, we'll be able to get this one done very soon. And this one as well, which would be very nice. Oh, come on, baby. Please, let me just click on you. Off the radar. Geheim. Oh, if you wonder about this, this is a diplomatic crisis. Please go ahead. Let's go get that bomb. Bomb, bomb, bomb. If you wonder about the game of war, please go ahead. The hill offered its unconditional surrender at 1746. Sehr gut. As it should have. Ah, middling. Very good. Very, very good. The fear is Wehrmacht. Aryans, not mere Germans. Subjects, not mere servants. Warriors, not mere soldiers. The Wehrmacht is the greatest military the world has ever known. Born out of by superior blood. 
and uh, and breeding, of course. The Germanic martial tradition dates back thousands of years to the noble warrior tribes of Northern Europe. The Wehrmacht is a strong right arm of a master race and will not be led astray by the siren song of the so-called freedom. The race, not mere citizens. The party, not mere the nation. The ideology, not treasonous ideals. Never again will the loyalty of the Wehrmacht be in question. Let the old Prussians weep for their dead traditions. The Third Reich is more worthy of their service than the Kaiser or the Republic ever were. A success in the snow. Again. And that's why we're going reforms right now, so... Um, Central Siberia, Far East. Let's do South Far East. Thank you, thank you. Hmm, and 100%, not bad. Pop up attacks, pop up, and die. <coughs> I'm sure some of us could tell, would love to tell some people to do that. Pop up, and you die. Hey, that's not bad. We're getting better, 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 better. Get rid of these slaves. We don't need slaves here. Slavery is an institution that has its uses, has its benefits, it has its cons, but it seems like they could be a lot of trouble. Four days left. Honestly, with this route, going the like a mixed conservative reformist route gives you. We just have so much political power. Over a thousand now with this. Like, that's a bit extreme. Like earlier, like like yesterday's video, we were struggling a little bit for political power, if I remember correctly, which I probably am not remembering correctly. But like, Jesus Christ, that's ridiculous. The Führer's Wehrmacht. Who's Wehrmacht? The Führer's. Ready for modern warfare. If you like to read about that, please go ahead. Nice. So, all this is done. Great. Over here is done. This one, um, I'll be honest. Like, I'll probably just use console commands for this because I've done it before. And while it's really good for consumer goods, it's this is not bad to do. And I like to get academic base to improve as well. I just think it's better if we just like do stuff over. Or like just do some other stuff I haven't done before. So, if you like to read about the Wehrmacht secure, please go ahead. Heil Speer. As this stuff is not bad, uh, was in, wasn't there a prerequisite for these things or something? I'm not really sure. Hiring spree, a Deutsche Praxis, Praxis Taulischkeit, prepare intelligence stuff and military applicability, and or und. We'll get that stuff done too. I want to come back over here. I want to see what happens. Um, I would rather do that stuff before. I haven't done this stuff before. No compassion for Himmler. No contact order. No mercy for Himmler. Confrontational policy. That sounds like a lot of fun. So if you want to read about compassion for Himmler, please go right ahead, as well as no contact order. I want to do no mercy for Himmler. Hitler make a mis made a mistake with his man. We will not make the same mistake again, unlike our dear Führer. We will ensure that Himmler's state shall no longer see the light which comes from our Vaterland. While they may possess nuclear weapons, we will not be intimidated. We will seal them away, confronting them for the demons that they are. This is probably going to end up in blowing up in her face. Uh, just in case, you know what? How about we save? Because you can see my save games. I'm, I'm totally finally showing you my... Hundreds, if not thousands, of slave games. Hey, slave, slave games. Oh no, we are. Oh, well, technically, we're kind of, kind of slave game right now. But hey, we don't talk about that here. Not in front of Susan. Nope, nope. Unless we're playing Victoria too. Oh boy. And then if you play as what a reactionary or fascist power, you can reenact slavery. Fun times. Why would you do that? Just because he can. Uh oh. Oh, that's, that's actually really not good. Um, there, do that. Don't bother us with that stuff again, please. Alright, so 17. Keep cutting this down for now. There's only three regions left, which is super nice. When Yemen starts falling apart, you know it's not going to be good. I want to play as money more. Mo Mormon money bags. A confrontational policy. We will meet the Burgundians every step of the way. We will face these traitorous monsters down at every turn they take. Germany and Avatalam shall no longer tolerate inaction towards them. We will waste nothing in our efforts to spite them and keep them from succeeding. By doing this, we become the worst enemy. But that is the price we will be happy to pay for the sake of our own people. The Yemen Arab Republic. Um, please go ahead and read about that if you would like to. We're getting involved in the Middle East, my friends. You, me, we're gonna win, hopefully. Technical support. Um, sure. Oh, uh, we can't spend command power. Oh, we get more. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this. So we can increase our commitment by spending all the PP we have, which is, I mean, it's insane. It's this is this is easier. This feels a little easier than actually doing full reformers. Full reformers can be quite difficult to do, but this is great. All right, Yemen, you're falling apart. We'll, we'll get you definitely with us, um, no matter what. Like I promise you that. Uh, we have tanks. I'm gonna send a tanky boy. And do we have any choppers? Yes, we do. Fashion Yegas? Uh, 
Follow Shem Yeagas. Yeah. You, dude. Go. Alright, how many boys can we send? A whole 40. That's not a lot. I don't think they have planes over there, so I'm just gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4. Just send you boys and gas them? It's just, it's just sending some chemical weapons over, that's all. It's not Africa, but still. A confrontation policy. As usual, the 40 soldiers of the SS Garrison were parading in front of the border, only stopping at the exact line dividing the two territories. And Rudolf Niederson, commander of the Breton Grenzwacht, looked impotently as his men were far fewer due to the low budget. Suddenly, a call interrupted his rancor thoughts. He answered, listen, and not five minutes later, his men were in, two, in parade at the sides of the road. The commanding SS looked at the ten watchmen, slightly amused. Is this everything the mighty Reich can summon against the righteous? He spat at his counterpart. Then the earth began to tremble. Before the SS could speak again, a panzer appeared from behind a building and moved at full speed towards the border. The black uniformed soldiers remained still as the thing got closer, closer, closer. When only a few meters separated the armored beast from the soft flesh, Rudolph smiled in glee. The men in black took one step backwards, then two. Then everyone was falling in disorder as the Grenzwacht laughed. With a loud noise, the tank halted one meter over the border. The SS returned, indignation etched over their face. You are just passing on the order and shit. I demand that you stop when faced with the barrel of Rudolph's pistol. You hold no authority here, Verata. He spat, feeling cruel joy in the way the other's face contorted. This, land's be this land belongs to the Vaterland, and you are unlawfully occupying it. There are no borders within the Reich. The traitor you call Master will soon understand it. As he spoke, several trucks unloaded a hundred hair soldiers, who immediately set up building fortifications. The watchman looked the SS dead in the eye, and his voice was cold as steel. It's only a matter of time before we return to Paris. Enjoy your black uniform while you can, for one day you will hang from a balcony and I will be the one to push you down, and for the first time, Rudolph saw fear in the eyes of the SS. This is only the beginning. We shall retake what is ours. Cool. Boys, go right on ahead. What type of damage are we doing? No damage? Okay, so after we get rid of two of divisions and send them away, we're now 48. Thanks, thanks for counting, game. Thanks for counting. No friends in the black state. Germany does not need friends in Burgundy. And Burgundy will never have allies in Germany again, forcing them to become friendless in as our next move. They may exist as they please, despite the hatred the world has for them, but we will make sure that their existence becomes a heck for them. If they stand against us for what we believe, so we will oppose them for the betrayal of Germany and National Socialism. We put National Socialism first here in Deutschland. Yeah, like I said before, um, uh, hold on, like, uh, if anyone actually, like, knew me in real life and I was saying all this stuff, they would think I'm, I'm really weird. But anyways, um, please go ahead and read about this if you'd like to. Not until something happens. Oh, wait, did they lose? Oh, are they, they both lost? I don't like that. Royalist victory in Yemen? Yeah, I don't think so. Alright, everyone, so now Yemen is looking beautiful. The Yar, the Yemen Arab Republic. We love the Yemen Arab Republic, but the Reich stands against monsters. We will never ever support monsters again. The Fatherland shall see to it that neither support nor sympathy nor forgiveness shall be extended to the hollow men who have sold themselves to Himmler and his black state. No longer are they us the men they once were. They are nothing but evil fiends seeking to bring down what we all stand for against them, or people shall be. Uh, das Vaterland toliert uh, keine Monster. Oh, whoops. Oh, we were doing that. I accidentally got rid of that. Whatever. Uh, right now, we're still doing stuff over here. And I sent actually tanks this time to Oman because we, we were still waiting for the other groups to get back here. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is, but whatever. We're trying the best we can. Usually, I like using helicopters, but we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, it's not looking good for supply, but it is what it is. I guess right now, we're going to not cut down military spending because why would we do that? Um. Yeah, sending tanks here is about a really bad idea. There you go. Yes. Fantrusco, good luck. And it is 69, because we love 69. Thank you. Are you getting any more organization at all right now? Yes, that is good. But it's stuck at 17%, which really is not good. Um, I'd rather attack two versus one right now. That'd be better. Oh, propaganda campaign is ended. Where are we at with this? So we did win down there. Get some more command power, because you can. We are currently what? Uh, Let's take a look here. So after that, we'll do two giants together again. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Turn back to Doomsday Clock. Uh, I did go Land of the Free when I went full reformist. So we we're going to go conservative down this way on the East Coast, that old Grand Republic. Um, Yeah, I think we keep going reformist. That's fine for us for now. Conservative? No. Reformist? No. Reformist. Go reformist. Go reformist. Go reformist. That's fine. 
The Reich stands against monsters. Cool. And if you wonder about this again, please go ahead. Boom. Beautiful. Big and beautiful, just like how we like them. Cool. How much manpower does this group have? Almost done, which is good. If we hit them again, they'll probably all die. There you go, nice. This one's still a little too high for my liking. This one's very high for my liking as well, but whatever. Alright, you guys are still suffering a lot of attrition here, which makes sense. And you do that, and then if you can go straight to Sir, that'd be great. So we can help get rid of some of these guys. The invitation, if you want to do that, please go right ahead. With beta breath, we await. Up next, let's do a meeting with the leadership. Uh, I think I've actually read this one as well, so if you want to read it, please go right ahead. Come on, America, give in, please. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wow, it's going down here. It's Tokyo, stand off. What's going on down here? Come on, boys. Oh, a oh, success in the snow. Great. And more brush up. Good. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nice, there you go. Just don't lose and you'll be okay. Because we do have planes still here, so. And they're doing a little bit of damage. Oh! Americans reject us! Oh, no! That sucks. That is something to be celebrated. Uh, well. Pfft. New options of focus tree. Helmut eyed the letter on his desk. It had been delivered to the German consul in Washington not a day after he had spent the, sent their invitation. He steeled himself and reached for his letter opener. It was short, cut to the point. They were not rude, did not even rule the possibility of a future meeting, but it was a no. A particularly definitive no. If he was correctly reading between the lines. He dropped the letter and leaned back into his chair, letting out a heavy sigh. This would make things considerably more difficult. If America wouldn't give them a second chance, scheisse. How am I supposed to explain this to Speer? Oh my goodness, again? I thought we just dealt with this. Um, here, just in case. We love the Poles, but sometimes we think the Poles can get a little uppity, and uh, we don't want to deal with them. I don't really feel like dealing with them, so... Yeah, uh, make sure Pr Prussia is, like, really, really good for now. There you go. That should last a while, right? Uh, anything else over here? Nope. Cool. Nice. Good job, guys. Got rid of another division. Alright, anything else here? That was really disappointing that we couldn't get those guys with us, but whatever. Good. Death of Fo Chi Minh. Goodbye. Ooh. Alright, not bad. Oh, they're attacking us too, huh? Meeting with the leadership. Alright then. So what new options do we have for the US? Actually, I'm glad I'm kinda glad we failed, because I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh, never mind. Never mind. They're gone. Uh failure in policy. Despite our great efforts, the talks with the Emir Khan have failed. Helmut Schmidt is dismayed by what may many call his own personal failure, especially since he believes he did all he could do to achieve the expected results. This abrupt end of the negotiations means that all will remain as it is, especially in relation to the embargo, and has brought heavy criticism from the entire political spectrum of the German government. This is sure to weaken the image of the Gang of Four in the eyes of the Fuhrer. More commitment. There you go. It's not bad. That's just too high. We'll do Ostpreußen next. They're recovering, and we don't want them to recover. I don't even care. Just, just go. Please just kill them off. Wow, even when doing force attack, you still lose. That's really bad. That's actually extremely bad. Yeah, tanks are a bad idea here, man. Um, that one next. Now, can you win, maybe? No, you still can't win. Yeah, these tanks are... I might just delete them. They're really bad. They take up way too much supply. Uh, bow before them. A humiliating affair. Northfolk Accords. Uh, regrets I've had a few. I did what I had to do. We're doing it my way. Regrets I've had a few. For once, even Helmut Schmidt couldn't disagree with the Fuhrer. Or if he did, he knew better than to voice his opinions in the face of Speer's Fury. This isn't diplomacy. This is an attempt at exacting the unjust revenge on us for the defeat they faced 20 years ago. They want us to pay for those past failures. Even worse, they want us to squirm and beg for the mercy. This is enough. Effective immediately, all talks with the Americans are ended. Do they want a show of force, and we'll give them a show of force. We won a war against the entire world, and we've won a war against our own people. We shall never bow to the pitiful remnants of a decadent world. Let them know the price of their hubris. Alright, so yeah, actually, I'm gonna get rid of these guys. Screw it. I don't like these guys. Save us some more money. Send the plane, the helicopters. Supplies are so bad here. It's just so god awful. I don't know how they're able to keep this up with literally no manpower, right? They literally have none. 
You guys have none either, but well, that's helping them out. We should do okay. I, I did what I had to do. The time for diplomacy is over. The time for more physical approach to international relationships is upon us. By direct order of the fear, the entirety of the Reich's armed forces are to be put on full alert. The may I kind of provoke the eagle, and the eagle shall answer. From now on, we will enter a state of tension with the U.S. of A. We shall see whether the people is truly willing to risk another war against us. We may not be as strong as we were before, but they just got out of a difficult war in South Africa, and the prospect of having to face another useless conflict might just be what we need to prevail. Even though we're struggling here in, uh... Yeah, you know, basically Asia, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going a little crazy here. Ninety-five percent, so pretty good. Cool. Come back up here. Yeah, you guys. There we go. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, not too bad. Fifteen million slaves. Not bad. Oh, they're gonna win. Yeah. Yes. Why is supply so bad here right now? I don't understand why. And we can always spend more on the money. I mean, money doesn't really matter, but yeah, those tanks just way too big. Way too big. We're doing it my way. The first results of our strong presence to the American insults can already be seen, as the government faces heady criticism for having caused the risk of an all-out war between the two nuclear powers. The tension is palpable, and their very people is heavily conflicted between those who call for war and those who wish to concede and grant us what we've asked for in the first place and end the embargo. Field Marshal Shona, amongst the most conservative members of the armed forces and a direct rival to our even Art von, von Trusco, has come to us with a very interesting proposal that he claims will put an end to this matter in our favor. While the Gang of War opposes any actual escalation on the ground that we're aren't ready to fight an actual war against OFN. Perhaps what he offers is just what we need to push the Americana to surrender. And if this goes poorly, I'll go back and fi fix things up, so. Um, yes. I'm just going by percentage. Less than 15 million slaves here, so that's actually really good. All right, so we still have a tank here, which is really bad, but that's okay. Because the helicopters because these guys use up almost three supply. Almost three. You can use up 0.38. So this should help us a lot more, hopefully. Um, why don't you guys get in there? Oh, no, no, no. Go here. Defend that division in there for now. So they can still retreat. Oh, crap. That's not good. That's really not good. Um, hmm, we're doing it my way. Cool. An apology? Perhaps the best way to start negotiations would be an apology. Though the Lanthropa Dam was in order by us, we are still their successors in accordance to the international laws of continuation, which means that in the eyes of the Italian government, we are directly responsible for any damage caused by our predecessor's actions. By issuing a public and official statement of apology, in which we express our regret for what the Italians suffered, we can show the delegation how sincere we are in mending the past, and start a new course for our new nations. We can only hope it works, of course. Anything else here? No, no, no. We gotta end this now. I don't want to wait any longer for this stuff. Why are the choppers moving so slow? Holy crap. Besides, anyway, off screen, like, I'm gonna fix this up to make sure that we've actually won here. My way. A town session in the Reich Chancellor today ended with a fear at the behest of the former Minister Schmidt, ordering the firing of 20 test missiles off the coast of Iceland. This test was a success, with all missiles succeeding in their launch, accuracy and detonation over the Atlantic Ocean. The fantastic display of air and ingenuity was televised to cheering German audiences across the Reich. Germany, as always, remains superior to all in her firepower. However, a second goal was achieved today as well. Across the eastern seaboard, American families cower in front of their TVs as an equally terrified president addresses the nation. From Berlin, Speer watches the American address grinning. The Yankees have yet to see anything. America watches right on back. Why is it so ungodly slow? Like, I understand infrastructure is like, destroyed probably here, but still. You guys gotta help out the attack here. This is, going, this is insane how slow this is. Shona's proposal, the U.S. of A, was stretched out before them in all of its glory. Von Tresco stood to the left side of the table, his crossed arms betraying the inscrutable expression on his face. Opposite him, Shona leant over the map, his shadow expanding across the east coast. He greeted the Fuhrer with a courteous smile that failed to reach his eyes. The two officers saluted in unison with a simultaneous hire. Speer returned the gesture and stared at the map with a furrow brow. Let's hear your proposal, General Feldmarschall. He trusted the man little and his military strategies less, but Speer knew better than to deny an audience with a man so influential in the military's movement. My proposal is simple, Shona boasted, almost dismissingly, or dismissively. He waved his hand generally across the land below him. Warfare is fought in the mine as well as the battlefield. It's one thing to throw empty words at the Jews in the White House. It's quite another to strike f true fear into their craven hearts. The hawk jabbed his finger close to the East Coast, and for a fleeting moment, Speer thought he was about to argue for a declaration of war against the U.S. We should fly our strategic bombers straight towards internationally recognized American airspace, before turning away at the last moment. True fear will grip the Americans, and their leaders will be on the paranoid alert, never knowing when a first strike is truly coming. We'll call it Schwarze Valkyrie. 
Herr Spell, this is far too risky, Von Trusco shook his head in disbelief. Shona glared at him with the shards of ice looking behind his spectacles. What if our pilots failed to turn away in time? What if the Americans act prematurely? Those mongrels slighted the Reich, Shona snapped, his spittle spraying across the map. They're not stupid enough to retaliate, but it'll teach them a lesson they won't forget. Speer silently rubbed his chin and thought. Fully implementing Schwarze Valkyrie could be a powerful show of strength, but a test run elsewhere will certainly be safer. Eisen, perhaps? Um, we should trial this tactic with Eisen first. Or, we should agree to Shona's proposal. His Black Valkyrie plan will be enacted. Significantly benefit. Oh, I'm going to cause World War III. Let's try it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's insane. That's absolutely insane to do. Oh, we won. Okay, we finally won there. Cool. Alright, so if that's the case, where did our plans go? Because we got to help these guys out too. Um, oh, well, we can't do anything yet until we actually give himself. Which we're probably going to lose. Just because uh, how things are set up here. There you go. 240. Holy crap, that's a lot more than I thought we would have. Go 200. Revolutionary victory in Oman. Full implementation. A teacher smiled to himself. As her children ran past the doorway that led to the playground, no running in the hallway, he said, and announced sternly to the 40 or so elementary children. It took more willpower than he cared to admit to not crack a smile as his students let out the barrage of humble sorrows and yet, yes, has. The day was warm and sunny. It was a beautiful day to play ball. The teacher watched from the sideline, occasionally passing back a ball, kicked out of bounds. Johan felt at ease here at school, although scars maimed his face. Anyone who knew Johan could vouch for his giant heart. Johan was always calm and tried his hardest to be kind and fair to great success. Though they wouldn't admit it to his face, his students only sang praise about the teacher to his co-workers and the parents to Johan's embarrassment. Still, it was welcome praise. The children gave him a purpose, although he had lost his pregnant wife in the Civil War. Being a mentor to the next generation of Germans gave Johan hope. Here he was, helping to raise a new generation, and he did so with much kindness, in a way. They were his family. How He did, however, envy the children, not having to join a Nazi chapter, have friends, or participate to pay in the football clubs. They didn't have to know party politics to be able to swim at the local pool, nor were they judged by the devotion or lack of thereof to Hitler's cult of personality. They could be children. It was a wonderful time to be young, and he was glad he fought for that. The sound of jets roared overhead nearly made Johann flinch, his reflexes almost taking control over his body. Even after all these years, he took a deep breath. He had to stay composed for the children. Johan looked above, watching yet another air wing soar above his head, heading northwest, likely following the last hundred or so planes that came before that week. Another batch of strategic bombers whirring. As the children cheered and waved at the soaring planes above, the seed of worry in his head grew more. Why was there so much traffic in the air? Why were they all moving northwest? He pondered as the planes flew out of sight, and a ball hit his leg. Hey, Stein, can you pass the ball? A little girl yelled uh, from across the field. He passed the ball, now absent-minded, his smile and good mood gone. It's for your protection, Herr Steiner. Schwarze Valkyrie. With the recent breakdown in diplomacy between America and Germany, Albert Speer the Führer has begun to mobilize over Fava. Anonymous sources within his bureaucracy state that Germany has approved a new option, or operation. Codenamed Schwarze Valkyrie or Black Valkyrie, his operation appears to be both a German attempt to probe American and OFN airspace with massed air wings, including nuclear-capable strategic bombers. German intentions are not clear at this time, but this appears to be a direct result of collapsed diplomatic overtures between the U.S. and German Reich. Foreign observers warn that already high tensions may raise even more, and caution that limited conflict could result. It is unknown what the end results will be, but the world holds its breath as America and Germany square off. Who will blink first? Not us, they already gave us the photos of uh, that other dude they had back in the day. Alright. Anything for Africa, the Middle East, Southeast Asia? Yes. Ooh. Already launched a special mission, I guess, huh? Ah, uh, yes, we have. That sucks. It's alright, though. Anything here? Here? No? 92.5%? Not bad. Wow. Strong reformist tick. Um, but we're going to be quite conservative with what we've got here, so... Anything? No, 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 no. We do not. And I'm all out of water. 99 nights uh, of the air. His hands shook as he read the report. Shona stood in front of the fierce desk, hands clasped, still as a rock. Five bombers, the whole wing, shot down, Speer began. 18 of the 20 escorts shot down. No pilots recovered. No word from the Americans if they rescued any. I don't know what we would be better. Writing the letters to the families of brave men killed in defense of the Reich or having to talk to the Americans about returning our men they captured. This is a disaster, the fierce side. What are we going to do? <clears throat> Shona fold, pulled the folder they tucked away and handed it to Speer. The Fuhrer wordlessly opened the folder and read their proposal. A moment of silence passed. Wow, this is gall of you, Shona. Shona finally spoke. This was an active war. The militants are up in arms and demand decisive action. There is no other. Are you a bad word, mad, madman? Speer snapped. Dropping his voice, this was sort of effing war. 
Are you willing to give up everything for posturing you and your military's ego? Shona glanced at his feet and then looked up. If we don't respond, we shall look terribly weak with on the phone stage. And God knows what happens at home if we do nothing. That's why we choose Iceland, or chose Iceland. Small population, but important enough to show the world not to underestimate us ever. Spears head dropped. Mind you, it's a hard choice, but with the award, we can strike back tonight. We can regain our honor now, and we can still come on top of this mess. Spears looked back up at Shona. He had a choice to make. Fool's errand? The conservatives... You're right. God help us all. Oh, man. This is bad. This is bad. Uh, we'll see what happens. But, uh, saving face. While their apologies have been welcomed by the Italian delegation as a good start to the talks, they haven't been appreciated by the conservatives in a government not one bit. Now our own supporters criticize Schmidt, the man responsible, or the main, resp main responsibility, for our diplomatic overtures to the Italian Empire, accusing him of having sold out our national pride in this humiliating charade. If we want to avoid problems at home, we'll need to find a way to save face at once. While not turning back our, on our apologies, which would only infuriate the Italians, we'll start a propaganda campaign about how important this will be for our national security and our economy in the long run. Well, uh, as long as the Americans don't nuke us, but, you know, whatever. Cool. 81 billion deficit. Oh! Apologizing for actions. Um, I think I already read this before, so if you're already about this, it's good. I sign strike. Oh boy, this is not good. <laughs> and get the heck out of my office, Sean heard, even all the way on the other side of the hallway. As he continued to stroll down the familiar corridor, four younger men, all secretaries of scrubs, scurried out of Spears' office. Shona took a deep breath and paused outside the door. A loud bang, closely followed by the sound of breaking glass, came from the other side of the room. A curse and silence, Shona knocked. What the heck do you idiots want? Spears screamed. He was pissed. Shona took another breath and then strolled in confidently. The office was a mess. It was clear that Speer was enraged, something Shona had never seen from the usually calm and collected man. Files and papers were strewn everywhere. A full-size mirror in the corner of the room were shattered into a million pieces, specks of blood strewn nearby. Pacing back and forth behind his desk was a disheveled Albert Speer, blood trickling down from his cut knuckles. He looked up and paused, his face darkened when he realized just who had entered. You, Speer, spoke and then paused. Shona for once had nothing to say. Make your report and make it quick. Mind you, he began. For once, he spoke these words without any traits of competent or contempt. For once, the two were in complete agreement with what had to be done. There was no backing down now. The U-boats are off the coast of Iceland as ordered. They are standing by on your... Shabir cut him off. Did I not give you simple, easy, gosh darn instructions? His tone was quieter now, but menacing. It was as if venom came from his lips. Uh, yeah, yes, sir, uh, Shona replied without stumbling over too many of his words. Describing Shabir's frustration was definitely an understatement. The captain, or captain, refused. The code's from me. Said procedure required him to hear the orders from your mouth. Speer merely stared at the general. Sure enough, for his part, remained calm. He walked forwards with his typical confidence and handed Speer a note with a number on it. The direct line, sir. Speer immediately punched the numbers into his landline. Captain von Steiner reporting. The voice on the other end spoke calmly as if it rehearsed a thousand times. Captain, the code is five. Oh, was it? Fünf, zwei, zwei, sieb, drei, acht, null. Launch your payload immediately. Oh my god! Oh no! For the second time in history, atomic warheads have been detonated in anger against fellow men. It is also the second time America has been struck by atomic fire. Iceland, an American citadel, has thoroughly raked by fire. Hotter than the sun, a German U-boat silently cruised offshore undetected and launched its deadly payload of short-range nuclear missiles in the early hours of the morning. There was less than a minute for the Americans to respond. Tens of thousands of people are now ash and little remains of the once beautiful island. People from around the world watch with unbedded terror. For this time, the U.S. Has, been, has a means to respond. As the two superpowers ready their respective nuclear arsenals, the clock strikes 12. The world holds its breath as America prepares its response, which will likely be retribution. You know, that's fine, right? Oh, actually, this is kind of cool, because I've done the nuclear warfare stuff before, but the devs have actually updated it, so it's actually a little bit different, so... It is what it is. I wanted to see how far we will go. So, I'm, in just a little bit, we're going to go back and, uh, so long, goodbye. It's going to lag like crazy, probably, because, uh, it's a mistake. Oh. Well, let's see about this. For the second time in human history, a nuclear weapon has been launched in anger against mankind. And for a second time, America has felt the heat of atomic hellfire. A U-boat has launched its payload, painting ice in red with its fierce nuclear glow, brighter than the sun, more brilliant than the stars, and hotter than heck itself. Speer and his top advisors sat in a conference room waiting a minute past, then two, and after three... Cautious optimism started to spread. Was Shona right after all? Were well, the Americans blink first? Another minute. The tension could be cut with an eye. Five, six, and after seven, a faceless administrator cracked a half-hearted joke. Eight, nine, finally ten minutes. The ten longest minutes in human history passed with a collective optimistic sigh of relief. An impromptu toast was raised to Fiosh Bear. Sieg Heil went the cry, and the man drank to the bold, to the Reich, and to the fearless leader, who had redeemed the honor and avenged the recent dead, those pilots who did not return from their salty to Iceland. Speer himself even took 
uh, partook, with a thin smile dancing on his lips. The Reich Avenger's sons are honor restored, another victory for the Vaterland, perhaps the greatest yet, who would dare to face her? A senior officer rushed into the merry conference room, breathless and white as a ghost. They've launching, they're launching everything, of course, his staff. <clears throat> The petty bureaucrats and the oh so tough warmongers fled to the bunker complexes. The siren sounded, but it would be for naught. Speer knew that the missiles would strike with their deadly payloads within 15 minutes. It was hardly any time for the citizens to reach the few bunkers scattered across Germany. Ten minutes after the sound the alarm sounded, intermittent shaking began. Speer felt little terror within him himself, but the pangs of a remorse racked his mind. As the ground heaved beneath his feet, he had one duty he needed to yet fulfill. He owed it to his people. The fear found Shona standing beside the grand window facing north. Speer joined him. Neither man spoke as they watched the horizon glow, the grand beacons of light, and after approaching closer and closer to Germania. So, this is it. The general finally broke the silence. Yet, Speer could not speak. In another 20 minutes or so, he knew the Reich, his Reich, as home, would be ash. There wasn't even time for enough people to make it to the bunkers to fill them. The streets were eerily empty, and other than the cry of the sirens and the sporadic booms of approaching doom, the heart of Germany was deathly silent. The city awaited her final judgment. This is it. This is how it ends. He spoke. A moment of silence passed. The ground suddenly jerked. Another blast rocked the earth. So violently that the glass in front of the man cracked and buckled. Neither man flinched. Shona was the first to turn and walk, presumably to the safety of the bunkers. This is what you wanted, right? Shona stopped his turn and turned back to face his leader, who had tears welling in his eyes. Well, how did we do, General? Did we play the part well, he spat? Applaud as we exit. Big kabooms. Well, there goes Egypt. Uh... Do we have it? Oh. These guys... We're still saving face. Um... Because I'm going to reload the save here and all, but... Uh... Do we... Is... Is it not done? Thermonuclear war? Hello? We are... are it's, it's been more than 15 minutes. It's been a few days, actually. Um, I, I gotta fix this up, too, but... I guess the missiles missed. Uh, 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 I'm not really sure. Maybe we could do this focus and see. Maybe I. Um. Uh, well then, um, I guess I'm gonna go back and look at the maybe get us to the other side of this. So, I'll see you in just a little bit. All right, there, everyone. So now I've gone back, and basically this time America actually has said yes instead of no and ending in nuclear hellfire. Well, I guess it didn't really end in nukes flying, but it ended in nukes flying, but not really. Um, we actually got accepted, in which we have to do the conference of global security and cooperation, and let's do this. So if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. This is where Helmut Schmidt meets the American delegates, the conference of global security and cooperation. Um, there's things that we have to do here that we could do, uh, get, let's see, mutual nuclear reduction helps reform its size. We, of course, guarantee the rights of uh, involuntary workers. Um, always be the first choice for our markets. Uh, Americans and slaves go together like biscuits and gravy. That's interesting. More options. Less nukes and open markets make two happier countries. Uh, this is really going to help the reformist side, which I'm not really sure I'm really gunning for. We can see to all demands. I did this one last time. Uh, we will not give away our hard-earned victories. Because of the way we're going, I don't mind doing this one again. I don't mind doing everything here. Just because we have more than enough stability, I'm pretty sure. And I want to get through this part of the tree. Because to do this, the reformers are going to get much more empowered. Which just means that we're just going to have to like do the conservative side. Which is fine with me. Like, I don't really care. So, we're going to do this. We're going to get all demands. Uh, we have that, at least. And we still have 100% stability. Um, but we will be doing... Home of the Brave, the Grand Old Republic, and this old house. And now we're going to really choose a lot of uh, conservative-minded stuff, just because that's a lot. And also, we just I, we, I literally just read one here in Oman. We have the Yemenis still here. Um, other than that, yeah, I know that I don't want to favor this to reformists too much. But realistically, we haven't really done too much on the side of reformist stuff, so. And additionally, we're also trying to finish up this stuff, too. Um, I think I'd rather just go, keep going down this American side. Uh, like I said before, I'm just going to use console commands if we need to to get through everything here once big big bad things start happening. So that'll be fine. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. And actually, let's take a look. We're still doing this stuff. Makes sense. 15 million slaves still here. We're really trying to cut it down though. Really, really, really. Does it does it go down every day or is it just like so? It's uh, it does not go down by every day. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe it's every month it goes down. An apology now and then apologizing for actions. We wonder about that. Please go ahead. Uh, actually, did I read this one before? Um, yeah, I did that one, so. Cool. 
Turn back the Doomsday Clock. Uh, we'll do that in a little bit, maybe. Uh, costing us five regime stability, Toronto Accords. Well, if you wonder about this, please go ahead. Turn back the Doomsday Clock. Doesn't make a lot of sense for us to do it. Mm, somewhat. Somewhat, but somewhat not. Because, I mean, we're trying to liberalize the, li liberalize, yeah, liberalize the economy quite a bit. Ooh. Yeah, hopefully this, this finishes soon. Um, but at this point, let's wait to do this. Just because I want to make sure we can really hit home the conservative stuff. So, uh, I already read that one earlier before we, you know, peaced out. Before I had to go do some other stuff and fix stuff here. So, I don't want to hit the, the reformist side too much. Uh, we want to hit the conservative side and really go down that way a little bit more. Get some of this going. So, but yeah. I mean, getting rid of slavery would probably be a good idea. So, there you go. There you go. And then there you go. Cool. Now we just gotta wait for Egypt to blow up. We love Egypt here. We love, love, love the Egyptians. Um, well, at least we got two victories, though. Our current involvement in the conflict is notable. Well, I'm not sure if it's really noticeable, but... Oh, there they go. Cool. Uh, looking to the border. The tensions of the last 20 years between the Pact and the Triumvirate can be seen in the physical borders between the two countries. The Alps, which crown the mainland of Italy and act as their natural defense, have been extensively fortified to prevent any aggression on our part. Bunkers, trenches, and, an and airships dot the Italian Alps, often digging below the mountains, to be able to launch surprise attacks from seemingly unreachable positions. Of course, our predecessors built their own defensive systems, and now border garrisons are stare angrily at each other from the two sides of the frontier until we see or ease our tension. It'll be almost impossible to truly let go of the past and normalize relationships. And here's something I normally sometimes do in front of you guys. I'm just going to save just in case. Uh, just because, like I did earlier, saving your game. Hey, look, vague. Uh, can be super, super helpful. Just saying. It can be super incredibly helpful. All right, let's see what we can do with these guys. Nothing about you guys, but yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, we need you. You for the war effort. Yes. And, like earlier, click on that. Click on you. Hello there. And now we can do a whole what? 60. Not a lot. Not really a lot, but that's okay. There you go. Good luck, guys. Just just gun them down. Please. For the love of God. Just gun them down. Cool. Stealth integration. Very nice. Very nice. And let's finish off our land auction. Or air auction, I should really say. Nothing there. Nothing there. Anything up top? Yes. No. Anything here? Yeah, no. Alright. Cool. Keep gunning them, boys. Keep gunning them. Oh, those guys are doing stuff, too. Uh, we'll probably fix that up as well. Go up to 100. Um, we could do 60. Ooh, you know what's good? We'll do it. We'll do 160. Why not? There you go. Go to... Oh, now it's 120. Okay, well... Oh, that's very weird. All right, then. We'll play your little games, Egypt, for now. A swan, huh? Just don't lose the capital, for the love of God. Please don't lose the capital. Saving face. Up next, we got some no stuff there. All right. All right. Russia's looking good. Asia, Southeast Asia. Yes. Uh, we already launched a special mission, though. We've got to wait a little bit. And anything here not that I really care about? Looking to the border. Thank you. Please don't capitulate. Please don't capitulate. Where are our divisions? We need to help them out. Look at Italy over there. They're just ready. They're chomping at the bit to get involved there. Ah, uh, but when has us won? You want to kill them off? I'm not even going to do anything else except kill them off first. This time we said motorized and infantry, or no, no, Fasham Uh Overall, I think that's a little better. And the motorized require quite a bit less supply, so that's my bad using tanks. You live and learn. Or at least, I live, and sometimes I learn. Wait for that, hopefully. Uh, looking to the border, and then easing the tensions, but first, let's see, 4 million slaves, 1.6, 4.8. Oh, we can do that yet. God dang it. Uh, we'll do one in each area here. Ding dong. Good. Nice. Ease the tension. Despite our initial talks, tension with Italy remains fairly high, and the delegation is cordially yet firmly refusing to proceed to more substantial aspects until all wrongs are righted, which of course is a veiled way to demand further concessions. Our apology, they argue, is a good start. Whoops, my apologies, that was my pants. But it serves no practical purpose, and will not bring the sea back to Genoa, Venice, and Livorno. Now we're in the uncomfortable position of having to choose whether to give in to their demands or not, and if yes... In what measure? The Italians want facts, not words. But we are truly ready to prostrate ourselves before them, just for the sake of a treaty. Perhaps we could simply grant them minor concessions, which should already satisfy the diplomats to some degree and prevent protests in our own country. Oh, I'm going to have to hammer home on the conservative bunch a whole bunch. Oh, baby boy. Ah, you want to attack. I see. Um, This actually looks really good over here. To go this way. There goes the Muslim Brotherhood. Goodbye, Muslim Brotherhood. Can you guys, when you are they are they really that beefy? How beefy are they? 
They are quite some beefy Egyptian boys. Now, what have their moms been feeding them? And then again, I did cut military spending, go figure. Should not have done that. But it is what it is. Go in, boys. Have a good time. Actually, by doing that, you take away their only supply victory points, though. So. That is very nice. Uh, we did force defense, they would lose any more anyway, so. Alright, now go in. Together. Oh, they can't even win over there, that's nice. And then easing the tensions. Anything yet? No? I'm waiting, I was waiting for this one to pop up. That's good. Ah, oh, Southern Border. Actually, I've technically already read this, so if you want to read that, please go ahead. Cool. Ah, now we're winning! Ah, it feels good to win, doesn't it? A trade agreement. When the Elanthropa disaster befell the Mediterranean countries, the Axis split after a heated meeting between Hitler and Mussolini. No one truly knows the details, but when the two left the room, they were both infuriated, and as soon as the alliance was officially over, the Reich and the Italian Empire immediately embargoed each other. At the beginning, we were clearly the stronger ones, and our colonies provided all the economic support our economies needed. Now, however, things have changed, pumped by the absolute monopoly over oil trade, and helped by a cunning and pragma pragmatic diplomatic policy which let them trade with both OFN and the Japanese fear the Italian economy is at risk of surpassing their own, especially after the Civil War. Now the embargo is suffocating us, and we desperately need to access Italian markets. Perhaps we should mutually let the embargo and begin on a clean state? Or clean slate. Good. Now dig a, a hole, please. I'll get some more organization first. How are you, are you, are you learning? Yes. Commando, cavalry leader, organizer, mountaineer. All good traits. Ah. And they're dead. Beautiful. We love it when our enemies die, right? A dead enemy is a good enemy. I swear, this... This was... Uh, the radio pack that I bought that I never enabled, but now I've enabled it recently. It sounds so weird, man. Makes sense, but still. Mm. We got rid of a lot of slaves here. Holy crap. Here, Ostpreußen? It's very nice. The Russian... <sighs> WRF. You just have to win, don't you, Zukov? I want... I'd rather fight Yugoda than you guys. Even though we're not going to fight him, but I'd rather fight Yugoda. I'll be honest. I'd fight Yugoda with a big, fat, thick, improved cruiser hole. It's almost 1970, so let's come over here. Get some civvy stuff. There you go. Feeling good. Staying alive. Feeling nice. Alright, this guy's completely cut off. Nice. Unten nehmen schwer Rapport. A success in the snow. And Unten nehmen Singvolgen? Oh, Singvolgen. If you like to read that, please go ahead. Danke schön. Ah, uh, those divisions encircled. Oh, we are, we are, we are little reformers right now. That's not good. That's why I stopped doing those other missions right now, so. Ah, uh, the Italian delegation is destroyed. Um, but at this victory in each... Oh, okay. There we go. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. It feels good to win, doesn't it? It does help if you, you know, go back to an earlier save and reload and try it again. But, you know, it is what it is. Follow it up with the trade agreement. Yes. The perfect mediator. But how far should we go? Uh, as our delegation has agreed to grant concessions to the Italians and future treaties between our countries, we now face internal indecision on the actual size of such concessions, as the various factions within the government try to convince the Big Daddy. Our ex-minister Schmidt and his followers agree that we should show the full extent of our goodwill, and try to convince the Italians that we truly want to build an entirely new relationship with them. The conservatives, on the other hand, refuse to humiliate the Reich by granting the Italian Empire the upper hand, and insist for token concessions which will nonetheless please their delegation, finally. The Führer himself is trying to act as a mediator, and could find a middle ground in substantial concessions but nothing major. Still, the arguments from all sides are very convincing. The matter is now in the leader's hands. In what direction will the helmsman decide, decide to see a ship? In the end, the reformers convince Speer. The fear finds a bit of ground. Conservatives' arguments prevail. Um, I'd like to do this one, but the conservative side of the government doesn't get any benefits, so I'm going to find the middle ground. I think the middle ground is the best one for now, because we, we need more conservative support, but we don't. there's nothing there, really. The talks are proving more difficult than expected. It seems we underestimated the hostility of the Italian delegation. Even Schmidt's skills are powerless before the sheer amount of grievances the Italians are throwing at us. It's evident we need to help in this, but bringing in our allies will only risk further infuriating the Italians. What we need is a new, truly neutral mediator, one perfectly balanced between the two sides, with no interest whatsoever in favoring one side or the other. Of course! France! No, Switzerland! The Swiss Confederation is encased between the Reich and the Italian Empire, and they've always maintained a policy of strict neutrality ever since the last war. Perhaps they would be willing to put their mediation between us, as they would greatly benefit from a renewed trade between the two sides of the Alps. God, I want to go to Switzerland someday. It sounds like a really cool place to be. 
All right. Yemen, we did this once. We'll do it again. You have some nice sunglasses, dude. Uh, all right, guys, I'm doing this earlier just because uh, I want to send planes. And by planes, I mean helicopters. And by helicopters, I mean attack planes. I'm going to chop up enemy bits. Uh, where are our planes? Oh, there you are. Ah, there you are. 140, you say? Well, I like my planes thick. Yes. Yes. Joint air operations. Very good. All right, then. Very nice. Naval doctrine, just in case those pesky Americanos want to come over. Because we can. Um, anything else here? Not really. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah. Good amount of damage. Ah. Would you like some forces? I got some good trucks. And some good uh, helicopter divisions. Ah, good. That's getting super close. Um, and we'll do this one next, because it's 45. And that's that's a large number. Ah, propaganda campaign. Good, thank God. All right, let's come back over here, and we're going to do conservative. Oh, we got some more. Yay, yay, yay. Conservative? Max out that conservative stuff, my friends. We must be centrist. And we still get a lot of PP. I love it. Whee! All right. Come back down here, and we did that one. So, 24. We can probably do that one. There you go. Cartel's gone there. There's literally these... Words are difficult, and I wish I could speak correctly sometimes. We got two areas left. Two areas. Oh, are they connecting? Are they touching? Oh, they're touching. They got supply. Oh, you dig bats. A trade agreement. Why not? The perfect mediator. All right, my friends. Uh, taking responsibility, everyone calm down. Of course, the news of her concessions to the tail ends could have caused quite the uproar back home. The conservatives inside our government are even more vocal than before in accusing us of being traitors to the Reich due to our way of conducting the negotiations. Now many ask for our delegation to rebuke all previous statements and show our southern neighbors who is the strongest member of the former Axis. While Reich's Minister Schmidt keeps negotiating, the Fuhrer will take it upon himself to placate the rowdy bureaucrats and politicians before another civil war breaks out. They will calm down, or they will face a healthy dose of their own recipe of order. They will. Alright, I'm not even gonna look at that stuff. Um, these guys are gonna need some serious help around here. The ding dongs. Arabs, please. If you're gonna kill each other, do it correctly. Do it with a lot of love. We do everything with a lot of love. And by love, I mean L U V, not L O V E. No, no, no. Lots of love. Ah, anti tank. Nice. Oh, come back over here. 1970s research. Thank you. Sagut. Goodbye. Go in, boys. I love helicopters, man. Can you imagine being just in a chopper in the Middle East? Just just flying through the desert. That'd be, actually, that sounds really cool, actually. Just, that sounds really cool. What I actually want to do in real... Well, maybe I... Maybe I, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Don't think I'll ever end up in Saudi Arabia, but you never know. I'm still not dead. Not yet. This, this episode's been really, really weird. It's in my mind. Mentally, I'm just like... Anything goes. Uh, oh, and... Okay, order 44. Ah, it is down to this. The way of the warriors we found in dying. No wonder we didn't go to the Japanese this time. Alright, boys, go on in if you can. Ah, the militia. The poor, suffering militia. Actually, I love choppers. Choppers are just so nice. I love having helicopters so much. Ah, uh, look how fast those boys go. Oh, we freed the horses. Horses be praised. Nice. Very nice. Go, boys, go! Medina will be ours! Ah, Mecca. Everyone calm down. Approaching the Swiss. The embassy of the Swiss Confederation is like an island of tranquility in a storm-wracked sea ever since the Battle of Mal Maraginano in 1515, which saw its entire army annihilated by eventual Republic of Venice, aided by the French. Switzerland has observed a policy of strict neutrality enshrined in 1815 after the end of the Napoleonic Wars. This, however, didn't stop the Swiss from taking interest in the rest of the world, at first by selling their soldiers to Europe at a fort in a constant war, and then by developing what is perhaps the largest banking system in the world, respected by all and equally distinct, distant from all. The Swiss government ensures that war stays as far as possible from its idyllic mountain paradise. 
As he reads the latest reports from Schmidt, who is desperately fighting against a diplomatic equivalent of an incendiary bombing perpetrated by the Italian delegation, Albus Schmidt can't help but sigh. Why did he agree to such onslaughts? If not for the sake of working with a gang of four, he never would have wasted time in such an endeavor, one which will most likely end in failure. Still, he has been dragged inside this mess, and now he's to help his minister against an enemy who wields diplomacy with the same skill that ancestors in the Italian city-states did centuries before. One third high culture and fine wines, another one charisma and sharp words, and the final third daggers and poison hidden behind a smile. Putting down the report, he reaches for the phone and enters the number. After a few seconds, an overly eager voice answers. Your Excellency, what an unexpected call. What can I do for you? To which the fear replies. Ambassador Chenot Respon, I ask and call you for that matter you mentioned to like Minister Schmidt last week. The Reich would be interested in expanding Swiss banking operations within Brandenburg, but in exchange I have to ask... I have to ask you to act as a mediator in our current diplomatic talks with the Italian Empire. Immediately comes the answer. I will inform the Federal Council of your most generous effort at once, Your Excellency. Please wait until tomorrow, and then the call ends. You're costing me a lot, Helmut. Please don't make me regret this, but we must be taking responsibility. Despite the progress we are starting to see, it seems that we've met a dead end, and as there is one issue the Italian delegation is adamant about. The Alanthropa Dam, even though we've already apologized, this is far from enough, and they want the right to take full responsibility for the devastation inflicted upon Italy and the entire Mediterranean by what they call Hitler's Mad Project. We have desperately tried to let them or let them see our point that we had no part in its making, but they've been unrelenting in the demands. The situation is simple. Either we compensate the Italians for the enormous damage the dam dealt to their economy, or the negotiations will immediately cease and the embargo will remain. Pick wise the Italian boys. While we love the Italians, we only tell them until they don't love us anymore. Go my choppers! God I love choppers so much. Oh yeah. Choppers. Tabuk. We will get to the book. No worries. Nope. 100%. Not bad. Cool. We got to book. Oh, you guys went all the way there and came back. Go Sakaka. Sakaka. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm probably making fun of this group. Um, but Sakaka. Look, they just... I love it. I mean, just this... Is that it? Okay. I was hoping that'd be it. Yemeni victory in Arabia. What about the oil? That is the most important thing. Don't bring about the oil. That's the most important thing there. The Yemen... Holy crap! Attack and bonus defense against the... Oh, minus 50% attack and minus 25% defense? Wow! Sorry, my just like... Wow! That is insane. <laughs> everyone calm down. Yeah, everyone calm down for right now. Happy 1971. This is going to be a great year for us. I can feel it. Nothing bad is going to happen in this decade. Nothing bad will happen. I can feel it in my bones. Alright, if you want to be about Das Vaterland, please go right ahead. And better industrial equipment. Also, I think off-screen we might have gotten better academic base as well. Uh, let me double-check that. Oh, I did that first. Thank you. And... Yeah. We did. Tertiary schooling. That's actually really good. Look at that. Nice. Academic golden age. Well, we're getting there. Um... This is... This is there's no point to do that one there. Seize corporate assets. How many corporate... How many times can we seize corporate assets? Want to name in Zingvol... Zingvogel report. Oh, allies turn on each other? If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. All right, a pact of non-aggression. Perhaps the first tangible result of this exhausting round of negotiations, we shall officially propose a pact of non-aggression between the Reich and the Italian Empire. By slowly demilitarizing the border and keeping true <clears throat> to our previous concessions, the Italians will soften with time, and with enough time, they'll be willing to cooperate with us more. Herr Schmidt sees the end of the tunnel, and optimism is spreading among the delegation like a wildfire. We can only hope this will... We we are truly leaving this mess, and this isn't an elaborate ploy from the Italians to make us lose our face before the world. Let's hope not. My gosh, we got so much pee, -pee. Ah! IG Fabin. We only have 13 million slaves left here, which is awesome, 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 awesome. We're almost there, my friends. We're almost there. Almost there. Good. It, that actually didn't help out by much, whatever. Um, oh. We're gonna do that again, but let's go and do a pact of non-aggression. Oh, we can't do that one yet. That sucks. Oh, should be able to do it soon, but let's go read another focus first time. Uh, please, thank you. Token compensation. After days of relentless effort, we have finally managed to secure a fair deal to settle the matter of Alantropa. It seems that the Italian delegation, those cunning dudes, never actually expected us to pay the entirety of the ridiculous sum they were asking for instead. They are using it as leverage to gain an advantage, and the following negotiations to find an agreement on the actual size of the compensation. We should have expected it, especially from the ones who managed to keep the triumvirate together for more than ten years when all three partners hated each other only slightly less than how much they hated us. Still, it doesn't matter. In the end, the most important thing is that we have reached an agreement. The Reich will pay a large lump sum of money to the Italian Empire. In exchange, the Italian government will consider the matter fully settled for the future. Embers of the past. 
If you like to read about that, please go ahead. Perhaps, perhaps I'll miss you too someday. Oh, Antonin, Antonin, Antonin. His story is well, story. Ah, yes, Antica satellites. Uh, yes. Ne Nevin Kitson, if you like to read about that, please go ahead. But we're gonna do it anyway. Thank you, thank you. Flickering and fading. There you go. Nice. Victory, victory, victory. We love the victories. Oh, come on. Can we do it again, please? Please, please. We got 32 command power. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, we can do that one first. Oh, whatever. It's not really effective, but whatever. We have so much PP. So much PP. Come on. Come on. Let us do it. I know this. you can only do this once every month. 13 million slaves is not bad, though. Can we actually get rid of more slaves? I mean, that would be kind of nice, actually. Hey. Uh, oh, we're so close. Come on. Please give it to us. Please give it to us. Come on. Uh, why do you pain me so? Never truly lost. Um, I think I've read this one as well. So if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Uh, yeah, it, I have. Token competition. Nice. I'm just waiting literally for this one. Come on. Come on. Well, I guess I'll wait. Uh, I'll follow in relations. Finally, we've reached the conclusion of what Rex Minister Helmut Schmidt has labeled the agreement of the overwhelming majority of his senior advisors the most difficult negotiation of my entire life. Well, it'll take years, perhaps even decades, before our relationship with the Italian Empire can become friendly. We've achieved a thaw, which is already more than we expected of this mess. As the fortifications along the Austrian border are slowly abandoned, and the first trains and trucks timidly cross the frontier, exchanging goods between our economies, we can proudly tell the world that we've turned a new page in the history of Europe. A page where diplomacy and not strength of arms defines the country's worth. Come on, I want to get this done before things fall apart. Come on, we've got to get it all done. No, I don't want that one anymore. I want to seize corporate assets. Let me seize your assets. I want your assets. Please. Ah, we got it. I asked him to show up. Receive. We got him. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. Come on. A 30-year fury. Oh, boy. Um, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. Uh, oh, I already know this is getting really bad. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go into this one off screen. There's probably not going to be too much here. But, oh, God. We're not going to be. Oh, God. Um, I might have to use Collins commands for this. Just so I want to see what happens. So if you want to read about this, please go ahead. I've read this before. So it is what it is. Uh, yeah. The Fear Air Last. I don't remember. It might be June when things start breaking down, but I've got to end the episode here. Uh, we actually don't need to do this one anymore. That's actually really good. So, um, yeah. If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Again, if you want to read about uh, the Volks Aktien, please go right ahead as well. And we'll probably start the next episode with the event of Volks Aktien. And I thought relations well. But if you enjoyed this video, give a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when everything just starts falling apart like crazy, and the deficit is just going to balloon up even more. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.